the only way to know for sure would be to examine Kennedy's skull. Since that's impossible, a team at the Boston University School of Medicine will instead try to virtually reconstruct Kennedy's head wound. Greg Mahoney is a forensic artist. James McKinnis, a forensic anthropologist. Leading the team is Peter Cummings, a pathologist who specializes in gunshot wounds to the head. What I typically do with a gunshot wound to the head case is I'll try to reconstruct the skull by taking the fragments and putting them back into the place where they belong anatomically. Several fragments of Kennedy's skull were recovered from his scalp, the limousine, and Dealey Plaza. To see if there's any sign of a shot from the grassy knoll, the team tries to piece together the fragments. Cummings hopes that reconstructing the skull will show whether or not there's an entry wound in the right front. When the process is complete, the team sees only evidence of a rear entry wound. Everything I've seen is consistent with a relatively simple scenario. Bullet enters here and comes out roughly in this area. I don't know where the exit wound is. There's not a discrete exit point. But this is only an experiment using publicly available copies of autopsy photos and x-rays. To learn more, Cummings goes to the National Archives, where the high-quality originals and Kennedy's clothing are kept. The Kennedy family has granted him access on Nova's behalf, but no cameras are allowed. It was a real honor. It's something that I grew up with. As a boy, seeing the Zabruder film was one of the things that really fueled my interest in doing forensics. This was John F. Kennedy, and I was handling his clothing. Even though I went there for a very specific reason, a scientific reason, certainly the, that moment wasn't lost on me. The photographs themselves are, are crystal clear. The sharpness is amazing. You can get a lot of detail from them, much better than anything you can find that's publicly available. Even so, they're not perfect. A photo intended to document the entry point is unclear because for whatever reason, the autopsy doctors did not shave the head wound. The brain yields more information. This is a drawing of President Kennedy's brain that was done for one of the investigative committees. We see the wound track that extends from the occipital pole, the back of the brain, the back tip of the brain, all the way up through the front of the brain. A shot from the grassy knoll would have exited through the left side of Kennedy's brain, but that is largely undamaged. Moving on to an x-ray of Kennedy's skull, multiple fractures are evident. To Cummings, the pattern of fracture lines is a clue to the bullet's direction. As the bullet impacts the skull, the fracture lines will radiate off from that point of impact. As that's happening, the head is also expanding from this incredible pressure wave that's occurring inside the head. In tests at the Biophysics Laboratory, an Army research center, Carcano bullets were fired into human skulls filled with ballistic gelatin. First, the impact of a bullet entering from the rear causes fractures to radiate forward. But almost at the same instant, a pressure wave inside the gelatin causes a second wave of fractures in a perpendicular direction, just like what Cummings sees on the Kennedy X-ray. So you have these long fractures that'll radiate out from an entry wound, and then you have these concentric fractures that happen perpendicular to the original fracture lines. If Kennedy had been shot from the grassy knoll, the primary fracture lines would radiate backwards from the front. But the X-ray shows the opposite. They radiate forward from the rear. Based on this fracture pattern in the skull, I think we can definitively say no, there is no shot from the side or from the front. But there is one lingering mystery. Where exactly was the entry wound? For 50 years, confusion over its precise location has fueled controversy. The autopsy doctors said it was low. The House committee put it four inches higher. One scientist thinks the autopsy doctors were right. Larry Sturdivant is an expert in wound ballistics. He worked at the Army's biophysics lab where the skull tests were done. Sturdivant thinks the House committee assumed there must be a straight line from the bullet's entry to exit in order to line up with the sixth floor window. Probably the reason that they developed the higher impact point was simply to explain the fact that 
that sort of line could line up with the school book depository window. I don't know why they assumed that it had to make a straight path. In the test at the biophysics lab, Carcano bullets did not follow a straight path inside the skull because they were deformed on impact. The bone is hard enough and strong enough and dense enough to deform the bullet. When it destabilizes, it begins to yaw. As soon as it begins to yaw, it develops a lift force, like an airplane wing, and it will inevitably take a curved path. This is consistent with the physical evidence. The bullet that hit Kennedy's head fragmented, leaving pieces in the brain and in the car. Sturdivant thinks the pressure wave created by the bullet inside the brain also explains Kennedy's movement backward. The tissue inside the skull was being moved around. It caused a massive amount of nerve stimulation to go down his spine. Every nerve in his body was stimulated. Now, since the back muscles are stronger than the abdominal muscles, that meant that Kennedy arched dramatically backwards. After 50 years, one of the most witnessed murders in history is still discussed and debated. Science can explain some things how a relatively intact Carcano bullet could wound two men, and how a shot from behind could cause Kennedy's backward movement. 